Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you ever found yourself juggling between the raw power of Microsoft Excel and the slick presentation of Microsoft Word, wishing for a tool that beautifully blends the two, then today's video is just for you. Meet Matcat, the engineering wizard that combines the computational prowess of Excel with the aesthetics and ease of use of Word. Matcat not only simplifies the calculation process, but also takes the headache out of unit conversion. Today, we are diving into a trial and error exercise from my hydraulics course. Let's jump into the exercise. So this is my lecture slide. Let's look at the exercise. So this is the exercise. It is example 3.9 from the main textbook that we use. So let's first read the text. So they says that in this figure, there are two sections of cast iron pipe connected in series that transport water from a, res a reservoir and discharge it into air through a rotary valve at a location 100 meter below the water surface elevation. If the water temperature is 10 degrees Celsius, and square edge connections are used, what is the discharge? So in this exercise, they are asking for the discharge rate, Q. And my advice for all of my students, before you jump into any exercise, let's first strategize it in your head. So let me open a whiteboard. So what are they telling you? So cast iron pipe. This one they indirectly telling us about the roughness value, the roughness value of E. And okay, rotary valve. This is related to the head loss at the valve. Okay, the water temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. This one is for the new, the kinematic viscosities that we will later use to find the Reynolds number. Square edge, this one is for the, uh, the entrance head loss. Okay, now let's see. So they are asking for this charge rate which is Q. And as you already know from fluid mechanics, that the discharge rate Q is equal to A times V. The cross-sectional area multiplied by the velocity of the flow. So in this case, you can see there are two pipes, pipe number one and pipe number two which its property are given, the diameter and the length. So we can say Q equal to A1, V1, which is also equal to A2, V2. Now the cross-sectional area, since they gave us the diameter, we can easily convert that, or we can easily calculate A, the area. Now the question is with V. How can we find the velocity of these points? So, in order to get velocity, we can use Bernoulli equation. Which will give us the relationship between pressure and velocity and also the elevation. Okay, let me write down properly. P1 over gamma plus V1 over 2G plus Z1 equal to P... No, instead of finding the first point, let's call this point, the point on the surface of the water as point zero. 
and this point they already name it point three. So p zero p at point zero over gamma plus v at point zero over two v square over two g plus z at point zero equal to p at point three plus v. Okay, if you take a closer look, point three is also on type two. So we can say that v3 is actually equal to v2. So let me stick with v2 for now. v2 square over 2g plus z at point 3 plus the head loss that occurred throughout this system. The head loss, uh, okay, we're gonna talk about it later anyway. So if you take a closer look, let me change the color. So P at point zero, since it's on the surface, so the pressure is actually atmospheric pressure. And if we are using gauge pressure system, atmospheric pressure in gauge system is zero. So we can say this term is equal to zero. V zero. Since there is no dimension of the tank of the reservoir is given so we can safely assume that the tank is really large by that i mean the drop of the water is negligible in that sense v0 is also zero now let's say if we take the water surface level as our datum so Z0 is also 0. P3, since the pipe is discharging water into air, so P3 is also atmospheric pressure, which in the gauge system is 0. Now V2 is what we are looking for, what we are after. Z3, this is, as you can see, point 3 here. And since we assume this level to be our datum, so point 3, the elevation of point 3 is actually minus 100 meter. Now we are stuck with head loss. Oops, let me change the color into black. So, how do we find head loss? If you look at this delivery, water delivery, we can see that there will be some minor head loss at this point, which is the entrance head loss. Then when the water is flowing through pipe number one, there will be friction. So let's call it HF1, friction head loss for pipe one. Then at this point, when there is a sudden contraction in terms of pipe diameter, there will be another head loss, let's call it HC for contraction. Then there will be friction in pipe number 2, HF2. Okay, there is another valve at this point, so HV. And I don't believe there is any head loss here. So our head loss is this. Now let's uh, dissect this one by one. So HE, entrance head loss. So entrance head loss. Our connection is a square edge connection. So this is our case. So HE is actually, okay, let me write KE. We, in this case, in our case, the pipe that is connected to the tank is pipe number one. So we're gonna use 
v1 square over 2g and this ka is actually 0 0.5 okay hf1 friction so if we use the c wave batch equation this hf1 is actually equal to f1 friction coefficient times l1 over d d1 times v1 square over 2g okay now we'll have to trace f1 later let's look at the contraction head loss hc Uh, okay, it's here. So HC is KC times V, the smaller pipe, so in this case V2 over 2G. Okay, let me highlight this one. Now, KC here will also be a function of velocity okay for friction head loss hf2 similar to hf1 this is equal to f2 l2 over d2 v2 square over 2g Again, this F2 gonna be a function of V2. Now our last component, the valve. So this valve, HV, is equal to KV times V in this case. The valve is located within the pipe number 2, so V2 square over 2G. And if I'm not wrong, the valve type in this case is rotary valve. So KV is equal to 10. Okay, uh, let's look at F. As you probably remember, there are plenty of ways to find this friction coefficient and you can select whichever you like either Moody diagram or Sven, Sven Jen equation and in this case I'm gonna stick with Sven Jen so this F is actually equal to 0 0.25 over log e over d over 3.7 plus 5.74 over Reynolds number and all to the power of 0 0.9 square now again let's find Reynolds number so at the early of this lecture we already know that Reynolds number is actually equal to diameter d v over nu okay nu is easy to find they already told us about the water temperature d already given now we are stuck with v as well so I hope that by now you can see that this exercise is a trial and error exercise. By that I mean, okay, let me zoom in a bit. You need to start with velocity in order to find velocity. So this is actually a loop. So let 
let's go to MATCAD. So this is the interface of MATCAD. You can see there are so many tabs at the top. And within each tab, there are multiple buttons to choose. And in this area is the writing area. Uh, okay. There is one very interesting thing about MATCAD. Is the equal sign. As you can see from here, there are multiple equal signs. So let me start with this. This is the regular equal sign. But in Excel, uh, in MATCAD, they add this column in front of the equal sign to for us to define variables. Okay, and the shortcut for this symbol is actually the uh, the column symbol. So let me do a quick demonstration. Let's say if we just write out A equal to 1, it will give us error. Because MATCAD, it doesn't know what is variable A yet. So instead of using the regular equal symbol, Let's use this define symbol. Okay, let me start with here. You can click here. Let's say A equal to 1. Now you define variable A for MATCAD. So next time, let's say if you want to find another variable, which is equal to 5 times A. Now let me change A into 2 to make it nicer. So you can, okay, let me put equal. So now B is equal to 10. If somehow you update A to be three, now you can see it's automatically update. So the way that it works is similar to Excel, but the, the appearance of it is like Microsoft Word. So let's get started with our exercise. Let me put this to the left and the lecture slide to the right. Oh, uh, one more thing. This text box. So there is math region or actually Whenever you click and write something, it is math region. But if you want to write text, you need to create a text box. So in this exercise, as you can remember, we start with a trial value. So I really like V2, so let's use our V2. You can use this one, this one is fine. Let's give it one meter per second. This is totally fine. But if you want to make it subscript, you can use control minus. This would uh, give, let you type in subscript form. So now we have defined our V2. So V2 is one meter per second. This is a trial value. We're gonna come back and update it later. So let's list down all the information that we have here. And later, uh, I can close this one. So we have the one, which is equal, no, not the equal sign. We have to use the, the uh, defining sign, colon equal or just in the keyboard shortcut it's just colon symbol 40 centimeter now you can see in here the bold italic blue color in matcat this is referred to unit okay while we're here let me play around so 
Earlier we defined V1 to be 40 cm. So now I can just use the normal one. It's giving me in meter, which is true. But let's say if I wanted to somehow show in millimeter, I can just type in mm for millimeter and this will be updated accordingly. So like I said in the beginning of this video, Matcat, you don't have to care about unit. It will handle unit for you. Okay, so the one is 40 cm L subscript one. We define it to be 1000 meter as you can see in here. Here L1 is 1000 meter. And the two we define it to be 20 cm L2 we define it to be 1200 meter uh, what else do we know okay we know that it is cast iron so let me insert a text box and the shortcut for it is control T uh, for cast cast iron pipe let's go to the table that gives us the roughness value of cast iron Okay, it's here. So, iron, cast iron. So, our E value is 0 0.26 millimeter. So, I can click here and say E is defined as 0 0.26 millimeter. What else do they tell us? Okay, the water temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. So let me insert another text box. Control T. For 10 degrees Celsius water. Hold on, let me... Uh, turn this O into a superscript okay let's not spend time on this one so for 10 degrees Celsius new new kinemat kinematic viscosity oh let me add the text for this one uh, roughness pipe roughness and one good thing about matcat is that you can move it around as well Let me pull this a bit to the right. So, kinematic viscosity. No. Now, in order to type Greek letter, Okay, symbol. So Greek letters are here. So this is our new. You can select from here or if you don't want, you can type N. Now in order to turn English alphabet into Greek, 
we use this shortcut of control G. So N will turn to new. Or A, if you press control G, will turn to alpha. So let's stick with N, control G, new. We define it to be, hold on. Let me go and find that value. So 10 degrees Celsius. Our new is 1.306 1 1.306 times we use this symbol 10 to the power we use the symbol next to uh, number 6 like Excel so 10 to the power of minus 6 and the unit of this new is meter square per per second yeah so what else do we know okay this is probably about it so let's start with this the continuity equation so let me add another text box from continuity equation we know that a1v1 equal to a2v2 oh wait before that let me move this down a bit let me define a so our A1 is defined as pi, so I can use P and control G to turn it into green. But hold on, let's check. Let's check if this letter grid pi is actually equal to 3.14. So let me come here and P turn it into Greek let's use the normal equal sign so okay the normal pi is 3.142 so we are safe so pi D 1 square over 4 now okay we make a mistake here they tell us that this var variable is undefined because we forgot the multiplication sign so let's add multiplication now if you don't really trust this one you can bring a calculator and check this out so our d d1 is 40 centimeter if we take 3.14 times uh, let's convert this to meter so 0 0.4 square over 4 this would be our area in square meter and let me come here a2 is defined as pi times d2 square over 4 so this let me move this back up so continuity equation a1v1 equal to a2v2 now let me find v1 so v1 we defined it to be a2 the cross-sectional area of pipe 2 over a1 times v2 so you can take a look or you can check this with your calculator what is a2 this number times v2 over a1 over this number would it equal to 0 0.25 meter per second or not check it with your own calculator so our next step from here is find the Reynolds number So let's define a new variable called NO. N of 1 for pipe number 1 is defined as 
d vốn times v vốn over nhu so n control g ok this one is equal to this number and and all two since i'm too lazy to type let me select this copy and paste it here so and all two is d2 times v2 over nu let me move this to the right a bit now let me add a proper text so from right notes let me move this up and move this box down so Renault would give us this and then let's go to friction coefficient okay I'm looking for this so again text box control T from swim chain equation our f again subscript so control minus f1 is defined as 0.25 over logarithmic of let's open a parenthesis e over 3.7 d1 plus 5.74 and of 1 to the power of 0 0.9 and this square again it's better or it's safer to check this with your own calculator now let me copy this for F2 but let me move it here so F2 friction coefficient for pipe number 2 now we change all the subscript to 2 again so F1 is 0 0.022 and F2 is 0 0.023 but keep in mind this is not the final number yet because our V we guess that it is 1 meter per second later we'll come back and update this value and everything will be updated accordingly so one more thing from the C wise batch equation so our h subscript f one friction head loss in pipe one is defined as f one times l one over d d one as well times v1 square over 2g oh okay here they treat this parenthesis as a function like you were writing f of x and that is not what we are looking for we should have put this multiplication sign let's put in here as well so this is the friction head loss for pipe 1 let me change all the subscript to 2 for pipe 2 
and let's also check this G. And I already know Matcat's format. Whenever it shows us green, green means it is the the constant constant value. But anyway, let's just check. So G is 9.807 meter per second square. So that's what we are looking for. Oh, I forgot one more thing. So this equation is for non-laminar flow. Here. For non... Hold on. Here, for non-laminar flow. For the Raynaud number higher than 3000. Or higher than 2000. If it is lower than 2000, we should use this formula. So, okay, let me move this down and do this. So our F1 is defined as, okay, now let's go to a bit advanced. Let's go to programming and add this double line to add the structure to if. Yeah. Then go to programming again. Let's add if function. I hope you still remember the if condition from your programming class. So if n or no capital or one uh, okay let me just type in less than 2000 Then the, val, uh, the function should be 64 over n or n of 1. And let me move this down further. Now, if you hit this page break, you can come to here, select this symbol to go to draft view now if Renault number is less than 2000 do this then let's go to the else else let me just copy this number this formula here and let me put an equal sign okay let's test out so from this uh, Svan gem equation f1 is 0 0.22 now we already know that no is bigger than 2000 but let's say if I want to test let's say if I define n or 1 to be 1000 now this value should change okay so 64 over 1000 that's 0 0.064 so this one worked this the whole thing the whole definition works really well so now let's me control Z to uh, give the proper n of 1 okay. so this is how we use programming how we use if else function and now we can delete okay let me add an equal sign here and copy this one delete this and paste it here and change the subscript to 2 if n or 2 is less than 2000 then 64 over n or 2 if it is not laminar so over 2000 means either transitional flow or turbulence flow 
I want them to follow this one gem equation. Okay. Now let me move this one up. So from the survey batch we are here. So let's tackle all the minor head losses. So let me add a text box that says minor head losses. So the first one is the expansion head loss HE. We defined it as Oh no, not expansion, entrance. We defined it as... Okay, uh, let me just do this. I know it will give me error. KE, because we haven't defined KE yet. KE times V, in this case we want square over 2G. Okay, as expected, it shows me error because we haven't defined KG yet. KE yet. Uh, let me add a text box for for square edge entrance. K capital K KE is defined as 0 0.5 so now no more error i can put a an equal sign to check its value uh, next one is contraction sudden contraction here okay let's define kc first so KC is defined as now. Okay, let me move it down. You can see we gonna have to use interpolation. So let me teach you how to use interpolation in this. Let me come here and add another text box for uh, what is our D. Let me just say since. Let me check the uh, D two over D one to know which which column I'm gonna use for interpolation. D two over D one. Okay, D two over D one is zero point five. So in order to use interpolation, we need to define two, uh, two vector. So let me call this vector as V subscript C for contraction. When the D ratio, no, cannot use. When the D ratio is 0.5. No, actually we we just call VC. So VC defined us. Now we need to add vector. Uh, where would it be? Okay, matrix here. We can insert this. How many value? Five by one. So we can do this and type in those value manually or oh, okay for the first time let me just use this let's move this one down a bit and this kc go down further so the velocity are one meter per second two meter per second three meter per second six meter per second and twelve meter per second and let me 
put it here to save some space. And another one, we're gonna define vector k subscript c when the d okay the the ratio is 0.5 now for this one uh, let me use shortcut so let me open a square bracket and type in the number so the first one is 0.38 now I can hold shift enter to enter another entry 0.37 shift in her again 0.36 shift in her 0.33 shift in her 0.29 now after I define these two the raw value that we will use to interpolate let's go to defining KC let me also this do this let me add the if function for kc as well the idea goes like this if later on you might have to use the same matcat file for a different exercise but your diameter change you can easily uh, or this matcat file will pop up an error for you so you will not be able to fly through an unidentified mistake. So let me add an if function or an if clause. So we go to programming, add these two lines and if. So if d2 over d1 is equal to 0 0.5, okay we cannot use the regular equal sign we have to use a special equal sign which is this under comparison so is equal to 0 0.5 then now we go to defining our kc so this formula is called uh, linear interpolation or in matcat they use l inter p of Uh, what did we use? V or oh, V V2 Okay, I'm a bit rusty. Let me quickly Google So mat cat L inter P Let me quickly Google the syntax of it Okay, so the syntax is value of x, value of y, and x. So value of x is v, this one, vc. Value of y is k, c, when the d ratio is 0 0.5. Again, this subscript is what you put to remember later on and comma now this is the x value the actual x value that we will use so this is v2 okay 0 0.38 now let's what was our v2 v2 is 1 so from this table 1 0 0.38 as you can see in here let uh, make v2 equal to 6 see if this would update or not so 6 should give us 0 0.33 so nice now let's find somewhere in the middle let's say 2.5 2.5 so 2.5 is between these two so should be 0 0.36 Five. yeah so all good so our interpolation here the L inter P worked this is a special formula you can utilize in MATCAD so after we get KC let's define HC the head loss due to contraction 
which is defined as k subscript c multiply with v2 square over 2g so this number let me move it down a bit and what else do we have so he is done these two done kc is done now valve so hv h okay let me do it properly as well insert a text box for rotary valve our k subscript v is defined as if i'm not wrong this value is 10 yeah rotary valve 10 10 so our h subscript v is defined as k v times v 2 square over oops, over 2 g and this value happens to be this let's define hl head loss h subscript l is defined just head loss due to the entrance plus head loss due to friction in pipe one plus head loss due to contraction plus head loss due to friction in pipe 2 plus the head loss due to valve now our number is this and okay let me insert another text box from Bernoulli's equation let me move this down and let me write Bernoulli equation in here so in order to insert math box inside a text box we can do this so no actually i don't need to write it i trust that uh, the future you are able to remember the bernoulli's equation where did we define that no we did not define that let me put here as or put somewhere here to the right z at point 3 is defined as minus 100 meter so from Bernoulli equation we can say that head loss no no we can say that let me write out so the left side are zero so v2 is actually square root of minus z3 minus hl times 2g so v now let's use a different name instead of v2 let's say v2 result okay, let me add this and uh, this symbol result v2 result is our result from here not the gas value but the result based on the gas value so we define this as square root 
let's insert square root square root of minus z 3 minus head loss h l multiplied by 2g so as you can see we start with v2 equal to 2.5 our guess and the v2 result is 32 so we know that the 2.5 is wrong uh, let me introduce another variable called error or diff difference let's define this as v2 result minus v Two, the one that we guess. So our goal is to make this different equal to zero. And technically I can move this up. Now uh, let me go put it on full screen and go back to the page view. Now you can see whenever you update let's say 0.5 you update v2, you update your trial value you can see the error value oh, error sounds better, let me rename this as error you can see your error value but scrolling up and down is not easy let me introduce another trick it is called uh, Hold on, where is the collapsible space? Okay, here, space. So we click in here, we add a space. Nope. Oh, area, my bad. It's called area. So this area, we can hide or unhide it. So now let me okay cut control X cut everything and put it in this area and I want the error outside and let me put error here so now I can collapse this one and easily change this number to make error equal to zero or close to zero as much as we can. So 0 0.5, error is 43. Let's go to one. 41. So increasing is a good direction for now. 35 okay uh, we want to increase this until the error is small enough let's go to 3 so 22 let's go with 3.5 okay it's getting small so let me increase by 3.7 Oh, now 3.7, this error goes to negative. Now I need to roll it back a bit, so 6.5. 4. Okay, let's give it 6.9. 1. Uh, let's say 9.5. 3.9.5, 6.9.5. 0 0.4 now let's say if this is good enough for me by that I mean I'm happy with the error with some small amount of error so I can uh, set all with the value of V equal to 3.695 meter per second and our goal is Q which is equal not equal defined as a 2 multiply with v2 
So this is our discharge rate. 0 0.116 cubic meter per second which is correct 0 0.116 meter per second and for I would say most of your need these skills should satisfy most of them or all of them all of your ma the majority of your need however for some for some cases this might not be enough. So let's head to the more advanced one. And before that, let's save this one. So let me save this file to desktop and call it example. What was that? 3.9. Let me save this one and save us another file. Three point nine advanced. Let me open a parenthesis. Advanced. Now, uh, I believe most of you know the goal 6 feature in Excel or the solver feature in Excel. Now we are gonna attempt to do that in MATCAD. And we are easy. Okay, the goal 6 equivalent in here is the either maximize or minimize so we want to not minimize we want to minimize the absolute value of the error but market it will not allow you to do that yet unless you define everything okay i can technically delete this for now this is the advanced file. It will not allow you to uh, straightly use the minimize one. So you have to modify. Let me move this area a bit to the top. You will need to modify everything as a function of V2. So let's do that. So V1, we need to make it as a function of V2, so we open parenthesis, V2. Uh, okay, hold on, let me first teach a bit. Let's say if we let A is a function of B, and we define it as, this is a brand new sheet, which I will delete it soon to B. Now, if this is a function definition now if we want to recall that one we say a let's say if we want to make b is equal to a equal now it gives us 16 so 8 multiplied by 2 16 so this is how we define function and you can also define composite function let's say a is a function of b and c is a function of a so we define it as let's say a plus 5 now this is wrong don't forget that a is also a function of b oh no my bad this is what i'm talking about c is a function of b and if we do this let me show you the error uh, a. This will give us error because we forget that A is also a function of B. So we need to add this in. Now it's no longer error. So C is A, a function of B plus 5. And our A is actually B, which is H. H 2 by 2, so 16. 16 plus 5, 21. Okay, this is the idea so let me delete this sheet 
and go back to our main one and start defining and as a function matcat cannot give us the exact value so we gonna have to trust that we didn't make any mistake along the way so and r1 is also a function of v2 that's what we want and the yeah, constant v yeah function of v2 so this is what i meant by composite function so and r function of v2 and this v1 is also a function of v2 which is embedded within this equation okay let's do this for v uh, for n or two as well and v2 yeah it's good so now this n or is a function of v2 same here same here Okay, we make a mistake here so we f1 is a function of v2 okay now no errors F1 is a function of V2 no F1 is a function of V2 as well and V1 I believe is a function of V2 okay delete the equal sign and we'll do this Okay, V2 itself, so it go there. Okay, HE function of V2. V1 is a function of V2 as well. And KE is good. So this are good. Now KC is a function of V2. Okay, we are almost there, so bear with me. Now, HL is a function of V2. And I believe everything is a function of V2. result is also a function of v2 hl is a function of v2 now let's add the let me cut this and let's add the absolute 
ya the absolute to the error function v2 result is a function of v2 oh error is also a function of v2 okay i hope i did not make mistake so if you want to check if you make any mistake regarding this function or not here's my tip you can do this v1 of some number let's say one meter per second and you drag this along and start changing let me go down a bit and start changing this now if you make a mistake somewhere this wouldn't work okay um, and i'm too lazy to check so let me just hide this area and before we go to the minimize function let me plot this one let me take the opportunity to teach you how to plot graph in MATCAD as well so we go to here no plot insert xy plot so this is our graph now it's a bit counterintuitive this is y axis so what do we want to put on y axis we want to plot error which is a function of v2 and our x axis is v2 soon it will give us error because we haven't defined v2 yet the the range of v2 so let's define your range of v2 so let's say v2 is defined as now in order to de define your range the syntax is like this the first the first value the second value then the last value so let's say i want to start at 0 0.01 meter per second comma and the next is 0 0.02 which means my step is 0.01 so from here to here the step is 0.01 and my last value earlier we got it to be 3.6 so i think 4 is enough meter per second now this is our graph let me pull it a bit to make it nicer now this is our graph you can see at small value of v2 the error is this 40 something and as we increase the error becomes smaller and smaller until this point it will be zero and it increase again so our goal is to in this advanced trick is to identify this part this point and the idea of plotting this graph is just to see whether our minimize function make any mistakes or not so uh, okay in this case the minimize also worked outside but if it's not you should create this solve plot so it has three components of it one is the guess value so we need to define what variable do we want uh, matcat to guess so we want it to guess v2 so let's say we give it a number of one meter per second so now it's locked in oh and don't worry about this uh, green box it's just telling me that this variable v2 has been defined before which we defined here just for plotting now let's redefine it for guessing and constraint if you have constraint put it in here this region uh, in here let's say our v2 must be bigger than zero that's the only constraint that we have let me delete some spaces now for solve 
we go to where was it function solving minimize well, let me come to here minimize so our goal is to minimize error which is a function of v2 and our variable is v v2 okay now we are facing an error so let me check the syntax so matcat minimize here they only want a function so let me remove this now okay now here we found our nice v2 uh, okay let me define a variable let's say the v v2 that is precise so our v2 the precise value or the value of this point is 3.9698 but again you are not coming this far just to get this three decimal place so let's find a way to increase the decimal places and to do that you can go to math formatting and here so these are the decimal places Let's pick the highest one, 15. So this is the precise value of your answer of this point. And let me find Q. So this is our final answer. Our Q is a 2 times V2 precise, which is equal to this. Now again, if you want to make it more precise you can do so and that wraps up our guide on MATCAD covering everything from the basics to more advanced features like if else statements interpolation functions plotting and using goal 6 we've seen firsthand on how MATCAD can simplify complex engineering problems making your calculations more efficient and intuitive Hopefully, this has given you a good starting point to integrate MATCAD into your future projects. It's a tool that offers a lot and with some practice, it can significantly enhance your problem-solving capabilities. If this video helped you out, consider dropping a like and subscribing for more content.